By 2050, the world population is projected to reach 9.7 billion people, a 27% increase from 2020. Over the next 30 years, the global populace will transform dramatically, with some regions exploding in growth, some slowing down, and others actually falling. In 2050, the population of Asia is projected to reach 5.29 billion, a 13.5% increase from 2020. While having grown, Asia will contribute 54.5% of the world population, 5% less than today. By 2050, Asia's currently young population will be significantly older, with the age demographics looking similar to Europe's today. And in 30 years, 66% of Asia's population will live in cities, compared to 51% today. The South Asian cities of Karachi, Kolkata, Dhaka, Delhi, and Mumbai will absorb much of this growth. In fact, in 2050, Mumbai will be the world's most populous city, followed by Delhi and Dhaka. Asia's population changes will differ throughout the continent. Most of East Asia, including China, Korea, Taiwan, and Japan, will actually experience population drops due to low fertility rates. In fact, by 2050, China will have 37 million less people than today. On the other hand, South and Southeast Asia, including India, Indonesia, Pakistan, and the Philippines, will mostly grow in population due to higher fertility rates. By 2050, India will have grown 18% to 1.64 billion people, making it the most populous country in the world. Lastly, Western and Central Asia will experience significant population growth, especially in Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen, where fertility rates are very high due to respect for large families and there being less educated women. In 2050, the population of Europe is projected to be 710 million, 4.2% lower than today. Europe's population is on the verge of decline. It is projected to peak at 748 million in 2021 before slowly shrinking. This decline will be mostly caused by lower fertility rates, resulting from many factors such as changing gender roles and a decline in the desired number of children. Because of this, in 2050, Europe will only contribute 7.5% of the world population, compared to 10.1% today. With fewer kids, the populace will also be older than at present. In 2050, 84.3% of Europe's population will live in cities, compared to 74.5% today. Much of this growth will go to the northern European cities of Stockholm, Copenhagen, Oslo, London, and Helsinki. Like Asia, Europe's population changes will differ throughout the continent. Southern Europe, including Spain, Italy, Portugal, and the Balkans will experience significant population drops. Likewise, Eastern Europe, including Russia, Ukraine, Poland, and Romania will decline in population. Southern and Eastern Europe's population decline, like East Asia's, will have profound impacts that I will discuss later. In contrast to the South and East, Western and Northern Europe's populations will grow. Germany is an exception though, its population will fall. The main reason these regions' populations will grow is emigration, partially from African and Asian refugees, but also from people originating in Southern and Eastern Europe, migrating North and West for better economic opportunities. In 2050, the population of Africa is projected to reach 2.49 billion an 86% increase from 2020. Africa will drive global population growth, contributing 59% of all expansion. By 2050, the continent will contribute 26.3% of the world population, compared to 18.2% today. Its population surge will be due to many factors, notably the region's high fertility and decreasing mortality rates. 
Because of these factors, Africa's already super young population will be slightly older, but still very young. In 2050, 59.8% of Africa's population will live in cities, compared to 43.8% today. The cities of Kinshasa, Lagos, Khartoum, Dar es Salaam, and Luanda will absorb much of this growth. In fact, Kinshasa and the DRC will grow 144% to 35 million people, making it the fourth most populous city in the world, almost as high as Tokyo today. Likewise, Lagos, Nigeria will grow 127% to 32.6 million people, making it the sixth most populous city in the world. Although all of Africa's population will grow, some regions will expand faster. Central Africa, including the DRC and Angola, will grow the fastest, expanding significantly in population. Eastern and Western Africa, including Nigeria, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Kenya, and Uganda, will grow at a slightly lower rate than Central Africa, but will increase in population by much more. In fact, in 2050, Nigeria will have passed the US as the third most populous country in the world. Northern Africa, including Egypt, Algeria, Sudan, and Morocco, will grow quickly but at a significantly lower rate than its sub-Saharan neighbors. Lastly, Southern Africa will grow the slowest but still slightly higher than the world average. Africa's rapid population growth, like South and Eastern Europe and East Asia's decline, will have profound impacts that I will discuss later. In 2050, the population of Northern America, or simply the USA and Canada, is projected to reach 425 million, a 15.3% increase from 2020. Like North and Western Europe, the US and Canada's populations will expand not from natural growth, but from emigration, mostly from Asia and Latin America. Without immigration, it's believed that the US and Canada's populations would start decreasing. By 2050, it's projected that a record 18% of the US population, or 72 million people, will be foreign-born, compared to 48 million today. These immigrants, along with their children, will drastically transform the racial and ethnic profile of the US. By 2050, it's projected that whites will be a minority, and that Hispanics will contribute 30% of the population. The forecasts are very similar for Canada. While having grown, the US and Canada will contribute only 4.5% of the world population, compared to 5% today. Over the next 30 years, their people will also grow older on average. In 2050, 90.9% of the US and Canada's populations will live in cities, compared to 82.6% today. The cities of Los Angeles, Miami, Dallas, and Houston will absorb much of this growth. In 2050, the population of Latin America and the Caribbean is projected to reach 762 million, a 16.5% increase from 2020. Latin America's population growth will look very similar to Asia's. Its age demographics will also look very similar to Asia's, with the population being older than today. In 2050, 89.9% of Latin America's population will live in cities, compared to 82.5% today. The cities of Mexico City, Lima, Santa Cruz de la Sierra, and Bogota will absorb much of this growth. Latin America's population changes will differ slightly throughout the region. Central America and Mexico will grow progressively, increasing modestly in population. Specifically, Guatemala, Honduras, Panama, and Belize will grow the fastest due to higher fertility. On average, South America will grow slower. Argentina, Venezuela, Peru, Ecuador, Paraguay, and Bolivia will grow quickly, similar to Central America. However, Brazil, Colombia, Chile, Uruguay, and the Guyanas will grow slower. Lastly, the Caribbean will grow at the smallest rate. Cuba, Puerto Rico, and Jamaica will actually decrease in population due to low fertility rates. 
In 2050, the population of Oceania is projected to reach 57.4 million, a 34.4% increase from 2020. Oceania will contribute 0.6% of the world population, a little higher than today. By 2050, 71.7% of Oceania's population will live in cities, compared to 67.8% today. Australia and New Zealand's populations will grow modestly from Asian emigration, and their populations will age. On the other hand, Melanesia will grow significantly in population. Its currently super young population will age slightly, but remain very young. By 2050, the world population will be wildly different. In East Asia and South and East Europe, the populations will have decreased. In contrast, in Africa, the population will have grown immensely. These three regions will experience the greatest population-inflicted social and economic changes. In Europe and East Asia, the construction industries will weaken due to decreased demand for new buildings. Businesses in general will also have less demand for their products and services. With less commuters, public transportation will be more expensive to run, and with fewer kids, schools will have less students. Furthermore, with more old people and less young people to support them, social security programs will face budget problems. Lastly, with less people producing and consuming goods, Europe and East Asia will have slow or negative economic growth. On the positive side though, young people will have more job opportunities and there will be decreased environmental impacts. Africa's population growth will have profound effects. With more people producing and consuming goods, the continent will experience rapid economic growth. Businesses will also have more demand and will be able to expand. In addition, with more young people, there will be more innovation and social change. Unfortunately though, there will be more unemployment and less job opportunities for the young. Food shortages will also be a serious threat, especially with climate change affecting crop yields. Lastly, Africa's environmental impacts will worsen. All of the projections I have listed in this video are based on current trends and models. Future events will definitely change the world population in ways that I, and others, cannot foresee. For example, the coronavirus has decreased short-term population growth around the world. However, for the most part, these projections should be accurate. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe for more videos very similar to this one. Also, remember to check out the comments and join the conversation. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.